The 2022 Gaokao, or college entrance exams, lasted four days and ended on June 10th. A record number of students attended the exam and many students and parents are confused as to why this year's exams are so difficult. We will explore this issue later, but first, let's have a look at some of the exam scenes in China. Recently, there has been a trend among parents to burn incense or cow to Buddha statues at home or at temples during Gao Kao. In 2022, Chinese media played up Qi Pao, the Mandarin gown. Many parents wore them for the Gao Kao occasion as a result. Chinese customs have a tradition of obtaining good luck by using words that have the same pronunciation with certain lucky words or phrases. For example, the number 8 has a similar ring to the word fortune. A lot of Chinese like to have as many 8s as possible in their cell numbers. Another Chinese idiom, qi kai de sheng, means the war flag is opened and the victory is won, describing the victory at the beginning of the war. Since about 2017, because qi pao and qi kai de sheng both have the sound qi, wearing a Mandarin dress or qi pao is considered to help bring victory. By the year 2022, this claim has suddenly gained momentum with the help of some media. Even many male parents and teachers wore Mandarin gowns as a way to send their blessings to students writing the Gao Kao exams. A father in Xi'an wanted to wear a Qi Pao himself to bring good luck to his daughter who was taking the exam. But in the end, he felt too embarrassed, so he paid his young son, RMB 10 Yuan, to wear it. Again, in a similar fashion, a new trend involves parents holding a sunflower in their hands high above their heads, signifying win in one fell swoop. Whether such practices are effective or not, Chinese parents are willing to try as the college entrance exam is too important to them and their children. However, neither the children nor the parents have expected that the 2022 exams could be so difficult, especially in the Chinese language and math tests. When the questions were made public, people were in shock. There were seven sets of tests in 2022, and the same test paper was used in nearly 10 provinces in a larger area. In one set of papers, the essay question of the Chinese language exam requires candidates to write an essay based on a scene selected from a classical Chinese novel, Dream of the Red Chamber. Roughly speaking, the scene depicted a young nobleman, the protagonist, who did a wonderful job in giving a name to a newly constructed pavilion and won his father's praise, which was a rare event. The father thought the name had taken into account various factors, in comparison to other names. Students were asked to write an essay based on why the name was so wonderful and its significance and application to one's life. The protagonist named the pavilion Ching Feng, which means a fragrant scent, while other scholars in the audience named the pavilion Xie Yu, which means it looks like crystalline water flowing like smooth jade. The father believed his son's choice was made with a wide range of considerations, including the surrounding environment as well as the origin of the Grand Garden, which was built to host the young man's sister who was the emperor's concubine coming home to visit her parents. The classic novel, Dream of the Red Chamber, was written more than 300 years ago. To really understand why one name is better than others, one needs to be proficient in the ancient Chinese language and have a solid grasp of classic Chinese literature and its deep cultural connotations. For example, the Chinese word fang means fragrance and also refers to a beautiful woman. The word qin literally means a scent that penetrates one's nose and heart, but here it implies another layer of compliment to the imperial power. It refers to the royal grace bestowed to the family. 
It's hard to imagine those average students who speak modern Chinese and spend most of their time buried in reading textbooks and taking exams every day can understand the ancient poetic language and the subtlety of different names, especially children from poor rural villages. The language, lifestyle, and thinking of royalty and nobility hundreds of years ago seems so distant from their lives. This set of questions was used for the southwestern provinces of China, which happen to be relatively economically backward regions with large areas of impoverished rural villages. As soon as the exam was over, this question immediately hit the Weibo hot search. A university professor commented, "This is a rather difficult question. It involves Chinese culture and aesthetics. It's fairly demanding for the test takers." A Chinese writer wrote that the young nobleman and protagonist of *Dream of the Red Chamber* had a mastery of words and sentiments that is definitely at the level of a PhD in literature today. Thus, a Chinese netizen wrote, "Alas, I can't even understand the topic." Some said more directly, "This is to ensure that students from poor regions can't leave where they are." Another set of exam papers covering central and northwestern China, including Anhui Province, had an essay topic named "Leap and Leap Again." It required students to write about the development of Beijing from 2008 to 2022 in the context of the Beijing Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. Interestingly, students in Beijing weren't required to write on the subject because this set of exams were not used in Beijing. One parent in Anhui Province, a province that this exam was used, was furious about the essay topic. I just want to ask those experts and teachers who made the questions: Are you teasing our children in Anhui by giving them papers of Beijing? How many of our children in Anhui have been to Beijing, and how many of our adults have been to Beijing? In 2008, that is, 14 years ago, these kids were only three years old. They were in kindergarten. They couldn't even remember wetting their pants. How can you make them write about the changes in Beijing? What is the purpose of the experts and teachers who come up with the questions? What kind of talents are they trying to select using such a topic that's out of touch with reality? Is it to push kids to make up stuff and hypothesize everything? To pretend? Is this fair for the children in rural and remote mountain areas? It really is difficult to raise a high-born child from a humble family. The same is true for the math exam. Many students walked out in tears, and some cried in the exam room. A few simply fell asleep because they didn't know what to answer, and some even handed in blank papers. One parent wrote on social media, "Math is my daughter's strong suit. She came out of the math test crying bitterly and refused to take more tests in other subjects." The Chinese media reported on the math exam with a headline that read, "It's harder to write the math exam than flying up to the sky." The statement made it to the top online search. Teachers advise test takers to urgently adjust their mental attitude. One comment reads, "I thought it was a college entrance exam, but then I found out it was an Olympic math competition." Different regions of mainland China use different sets of tests and have different scores for admissions. Relatively speaking, tests in China's capital Beijing and the neighboring city Tianjin are relatively easier. The Communist Party's college entrance exam policy clearly favors metropolitan areas such as Beijing and Shanghai. Having a household registration in Beijing or Shanghai is a source of pride for the Chinese. The intensity of competition in the college entrance exams in these locations is reduced considerably. In Shanghai, the college entrance exams have been delayed until July 7th to 9th because the outbreak is still raging. Shanghai, which has been designing its own exams since 1985, has had little overlap with the national exam for a long time. In general, students in Shanghai are reluctant to leave the city. As a result, universities in Shanghai allocate fewer enrollment opportunities to outside jurisdictions. Those who wish to settle in Shanghai directly, i.e., to obtain a household registration in Shanghai, must be graduates of first-class universities in China, such as Tsinghua University and Peking University. 
Chinese people have become numb to the various inequalities that exist in Chinese society. But the overall increase in the difficulty of the college entrance exams has sparked a lot of discussion on China's social media Weibo, the Chinese equivalent of Twitter or Facebook. The fear among parents is that college entrance exams will only get harder in the future, as officials intend to divert large numbers of students into trades and vocational schools in order to strengthen China's real manufacturing sector. China's Gaokao, the college entrance exam, can be said to be an army of thousands of men trying to cross a single log bridge. It's the only way for young people to get a steady and decent job and for more rural youth, the only way to change their fate and get out of the rural areas. China held its first college entrance exam in 1952 with a 10-year hiatus during the Cultural Revolution. For many Chinese, preparing for Gaokao is the only focus of their lives until the age of 18. After these people get married and have children, they enter a new cycle. They begin to plan for Gaokao for the next generation. Starting from kindergarten, they prepare their children to enter a good university in the future. The number of students taking the college entrance examination in 2021 reached 10.78 million, and the number of nationwide students enrolled in 2022 was 11.93 million, an increase of 1.15 million in one year, a record high. Such numbers also confirm that young people in China face increasingly limited options other than taking the college entrance exam. While 11.93 million families are scrambling to get to the new starting line, another wave of people are already at the finish line of college life. 10.76 million college graduates are facing the hardest employment season in history in 2022. There is a lot of pressure. I have applied for more than 20 jobs, and I know some of my classmates have not found a job either. Starting from March, all the offline job fairs for Shanghai colleges were suspended, which was a huge impact on our students, because this period is usually the peak of our spring recruitment season. Many students would determine where they should go in these few months, so this impact was considerable. A survey conducted by China's largest job site, 51job.com, in March 2022 showed that 61% of graduates found it more difficult to find a job. In April, this website released another report, the 2022 Informal Employment Survey Report. It says 38% of employers in China will increase the hiring of non-regular employees in 2022, especially in large enterprises and private companies. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, and its subordinate branches have always been able to coin new words to replace words with heavy negative connotations. The term informal employment has somewhat replaced unemployment. The previous replacement was flexible employment. The Chinese Bureau of Statistics said earlier in the year that the number of flexibly employed people in China has reached about 200 million. Chinese media have reported similar news on several occasions. For example, 95% of newly hired Changguan or bylaw officers in a Beijing district have a doctorate or master's degree. Chinese media 163.com reported in April 2022 that a special survey on the makeup of delivery workers shows 7 million delivery workers in China have a master's degree or above. That is to say, there are 70,000 master's degree students delivering takeout. In other words, there are 70,000 graduate students with master's degrees in delivery and 3% with bachelor's degrees. That is 210,000, totaling 280,000 people with bachelor's degrees or above. Iris Peng, chief economist for Greater China at ING in Hong Kong, told The Voice of America that small and micro enterprises, which provide more than 60% of China's job demand, have fallen on hard times due to the outbreak lockdowns and controls, with shrinking manpower demand. Therefore, it has led to a huge gap between the number of jobs available and those who are looking for jobs. Even if state-owned enterprises or local government authorities expand their workforce, they still can't make up the difference. Moreover, in mainland China nowadays, if one wants to become a government official, one cannot learn it from books, and the only way to truly understand it is to learn to be degenerate and corrupt in the CCP's officialdom. It has always been popular for college graduates to apply for civil service, and most of the finalists are usually internally selected well in advance. 
A vicious cycle is forming in terms of employment. The closing of small to medium enterprises (SMEs) results in a large number of graduates not being able to find jobs, which in turn leads to a decline in spending power and a shrinking of retail businesses, including SME retail enterprises, who are less and less likely to hire people. Graduates are thus less likely to find employment. The fact that university diplomas are no longer good in finding jobs in China invariably reveals an embarrassing picture of the world's second largest economy and indicates the Chinese economy is not doing well. How many of the 10.76 million college students graduating in 2022 are still unemployed, and how many will soon be unemployed? The CCP is covering up the details, and it's impossible for the outside world to know. But tens of millions of Chinese families have long felt the pressure. As the Chinese government is unable to solve the problem of unemployed graduates, it is likely to adopt a stalling tactic: let the students stay in school for as many years as possible. If they don't succeed in this year's exam, they can take it again next year. If they don't make it next year, they can take it again the year after. The other thing is to induce young people to take up low-paying jobs. Why are there surprisingly difficult questions in the 2022 college entrance exam? And Nettison gave a straightforward answer: because there is a shortage of people at the bottom. On June 8th, China's Ministry of Civil Affairs, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Finance, and Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security jointly issued a notice calling for the expansion of employment opportunities in urban and rural areas and guiding the 2022 class of graduates to work in urban and rural communities. CCP Media also aired news programs during this period that are intended to be directional. CCTV broadcasted that on June 8, 2022, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping visited a vocational college in Sichuan and attended a job fair for private enterprises held at the school. You 听了他们介绍以后怎么样？感兴趣吗？<音> Chinese students and parents are in an unprecedented predicament. Even if they get into Tsinghua or Peking University, they can only compete for a rice bowl in the red system. At a time when PhD graduates are competing for positions like municipal bylaw officers, toilet attendants, and assistants to police officers, it illustrates that bookish knowledge does not necessarily change one's fate. Nevertheless, the number of students taking the college entrance exam in 2022 is still at a record high because the average Chinese has no choice. So it's inevitable that the philosophy of line flatism, or even bai lan, or let it rot, is becoming a trend among more and more young people.